they were bigger. Uh, he had a commission to, in Germany, to figure out how the, how the Romans made their canteens and made them all the same size. I made them big, and, and at the time I was in a tent going between Dallas and Minneapolis and, you know, trying to sell and make a living and all that kind of stuff, which was next to impossible. But uh, I saw Chris Stott, uh, and you guys may know him, he's a, he's a box king of the world, or he, at the time he was an excellent and a box maker, and he made one of these, and he made it about this big around, uh, and it, it was a box. And I thought, well, why not have something in between those two? So I, I started making them like this, and this was really a good seller in the 90s and the early 2000s, because guys like to go to football games, and you know you can't bring hard liquor into a football game uh, or a basketball game or any of those. And this doesn't pick up on the metal detector. <laughs> and, and that's they were walking through, the, you know, the the metal detectors. That was the only security they had. After 9/11, you get patted down and you can't get in with this. But, but these still sell. And here, I'll pass this around. Uh, and this was, I used to teach an advanced class in Joey Campbell. And that, this was the first project that I put out there, which was a little test to see where you were really in this class for to learn something, or did you have nothing better to do? Uh, <coughs> let me tell you how that thing is made. Because there's a couple of steps before we get on the way. I get a, a block of wood, I think it's five and a half by seven. All the instructions are on your website, okay, in detail. Um, and I drill a two-inch hole in it. There's nothing sacred or interesting about a two-inch hole. It's just the number I picked. Um, and then I'm, I'm, I lay this out when I'm doing this, and I, and I find the center point on the end, and I find the center point on the other end, and of course that was the center point for my two-inch hole. Um, and what I used to do is mount this thing up like this. Anyway, I used to, to, to start, and I would you know, spin this around. The first thing I do, though, is I would mount this like so. And I'll put a whole bunch of circles around here. Okay? Just, you know, you have the lathe spinning and you put the circles around there. And then I used to, to take it away. And my wife came in to me one time and says, why don't you go with the bandsaw and save yourself a whole lot of work? So this is what I'm going to start with. And I'll pass this around. You can see the concentric circles. Okay. And you can see how it was mounted. The most crucial part of making this is determining where that center is and where that center is and where this center is. Uh, if you don't do it well, you're going to get an oblong or you know, different looking canteens. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. You can make these look like bottles. You can make it look like anything. The inside has got to be circular because that's what we're going to turn in.
Now, on a live center piece, maybe yeah, on a on a multi-axis piece. Make sure that you lock everything down. And my rule is, never put your hand on that side of the tool rest for any reason. You can move the tool rest if you, you know, wanted to get to something over here and reach for something. But you don't want to put your hand over there because as long as it's over here, you're not going to get hurt. But the minute it jumps out to here, okay. Anyway, here's, here's my blank, like it's going around. It's got the concentric circles on it. And when I turn this on, oh, this is a new one. I've never worked on one of these. I can see those circles. As it's, as it's spinning around. I think. <laughs> and what that lets me do is I am going to come in here. Uh, is that the RPMs right there that yep. the lady? Good. Now that cuts me straight across. And that's the second one. And what I'm looking for is, and I got it, that this is rounded. And the reason I want to know that is I will look and say, what concentric circle did you go to? And I might even darken that one just a little so that I can tell which one it is. Not 
quiet. I had a man. I've got this round and I've got this taken over. I might just want to sand that center part right there. And I'm going to pick up some, uh, this is a three inch disc sander. I'm going to try and hit just the bottom part of this. I don't want to hit the top. The multi-axis turning is every time you change a, uh, a way that you're turning it. So I've got something going back here to there. Uh, So, well, I'm going to mount this thing in my truck. And if my center, if my end holes are correct, then they all work. Let's see. It's kind of the same as it was, isn't it? I was looking at this one saying, is this the right one that I'm working with? Or, uh, is that a bomb or a dug tool? Uh, I, I use it on this so I can keep my fingers away. And I use it to put the bead at the, the, the top of the bottom. top and at the bottom. Anybody know the size of the opening in a wine bottle? Actually, it is 11 sixteenths, which is just a little bit under three quarters. <coughs> now I went out and I uh, I bought an 11 sixteenths bit. because I wanted my top to fit real well. And in putting it together, I use those silicone stoppers. This is an 11 sixteenths bit, but don't go out and buy one. Silicone stopper piece over the 
FHP for one. It expands. And if it would expand one sixteenth, it'd be three quarter inch bit. So if you make these, I would advise you, instead of buying another bit, two inches on the hole is it fits my chuck really well. Oops, forgot one thing. These were called veil mesh uh, scrapers. They're, they're still available from craft supplies that I know Packer. I think they're made by Hamlet. You want this off the way? And they really do just an absolutely perfect job on this. out for in this little process is those jaws are in the inside and your tool is on the inside so let's hope they don't meet and I only go halfway across because I don't want to hit those jaws came up with a, a little, I think it's, uh, MDF piece, quarter inch, in any quarter inch piece, but that will go right over my jaws also. So I only have the outside edge of this thing holding it in the 
You know, uh, have you ever sharpened these? Yeah, high, high speed steel will sharpen this and take out nicks just super. You, can, you can't do it, I don't know, uh, to take off a lot of metal, but it will it'll take off. And I sharpen these things every now and then. So let's hope that it holds, huh? Are you with me on that? It's a new tool, it's the smallest, it's a little small tool, and it just happens to work great on this because that distance is about to the level that I would like it, thinness on the, on the wall. So if I go down on this thing, sand this and get these marks off of here, okay? And I would turn it around and I would sand the other side. thing about this project is no matter where you are, you can always remount it. There's always a way. Okay. So this would be sanded and it would be round and it would look really good. Okay. Get that all in your mind. <laughs> So the next part is, 
I would create the medallions that go on the side. And because of the time, I'm going to just go with one medallion. Mm, I need my tail to tail, tail stop. Sorry, I think there are two people that may have parked next door about to get locked in for the night. So if you parked in the Baumgart's lot, this would be a good time to move. <laughs> this is We need to put a, a tenon on that that is right at two inches, right? To go in a piece. You can see the center on these dog prints. And I sent them to a guy about two blocks from me, he's not a laser. And he sees the picture. He's got this in his, his computer. He sees where the dot is for the center point. 
And for that, he charges me $2.50 to laser a pair, one for each side. And when, I, when he told me that, I have spent hours and hours with a, a Dremel or a high-speed tool trying to carve that stuff. And yes, I'm cheating, but it's worth it. Okay. Now here, what I'm going to do, if I can figure this out, is I will And you saw, you saw the finished product when, when it went by earlier, right? The way I get that center point is I just mount it on this little thing I made here. the stone in line is down in Colorado Springs. It's a an American Indian potter world. I mean they go hunting for it, they, they go looking at it. And so I try and make this with the colors that they use. And the easiest way I've found is with a stone in line. But we are not going to do that today. Sorby texturing tool. Three-petal flower in the middle. And I'm going 
put more color into my pieces. That's the large, the large for you. This is the next one down. I'm at about 800 RPMs, 730. The way you do this is you always keep the this straight up and down. Well, maybe not, but, but close. If you just want to try and do decoration. And this tool does not cut. It just indents. And the reason I took the measurement was when I go to do the second one, if I want it the same, then I have, you know, I know how far this is from center. Okay. So the last thing, and I would make two of those. About ten minutes. <laughs> About ten minutes. Yeah. So the last thing I've got to do is to and this was sitting in the box and already already round, so I thought I'd use it. I sure hope it works. Sometimes they're sitting in the box because they don't work. Now I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this top so that it. Uh, so hopefully, now I'm going to set this just a scotch over a half inch.
it's got to come down and it's got to come off a little bit. When you do this, take your canteen and see if it fits. There's two fits that have to go on here. One is the fit of the That's pretty close. Uh, make sure that it fits into the hole. You know, you don't want to get the. This is probably this is probably too big for it too. But it's tight enough that the silicone is sticking in with no glue. So you know what I would do. It's eight thirty. I would turn this around into this chuck so I could hold that, that spigot sitting out there and then I would turn my top over on it, okay? Sorry guys, I, but I tried to make the time, okay? <laughs> Is there not a